Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises and the blessings due to Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach, what Malachi was shy. Secondly, this is Brother Yaradan W5 Detroit coming back at you with yet another cold cut. All right, today in this cold cut, we will be going over the word of the day. All right, Abba Rath is out. We can make this a reoccurring segment where we go through the Bible uh, dictionary and go over a word and break it down through the spirit and, of course, through precepts as well. And today's word is Javin. All right. And as you can see, a region settled by one of the sons of Japheth. And it provides the Bible verse. Javin was the name of this country to Ezekiel 27 and 11, who saw it as an important trade center. So Javin, and you see a parenthesis as well, Greek Ionia came to be the name of Greece to the Hebrews during the period 700 to 630 BC. The Ionians carried on extensive trade in the Near East, hence all people of Greece were called Javan. Now, this is pretty important information because, yes, we touch on who Esau is. We know who the Ishmaelites are. We know who the Moabites are. We have a pretty well idea on the majority of these nations and who they are. And in fact, we have breakdowns and go into the history to prove how we know who they are. But rarely do we ever touch on Javan, right, which are the so-called Minoans and a few um, so-called Polynesians. All right, so again, Aparatazai Ezra may get edified through the sources and the history that's brought out today. So let's dive into it. Now, what I'm reading to you is from Babylon on Timbuktu. You can see right there. This is the PDF version. You can download it on your phone, your tablet, and or your laptop. So that's what I'll be uh, reading from today. And we're going to start the origin of the white race. It's not going to start with the um, white race, but it's going to more so start with uh, the beginning, rather. Right? Because we know that Esau came from, ultimately, uh, from, from Shem. He didn't come from Ham or Japheth. <laughs> All right? But nevertheless... In any case, we're going to start from this paragraph. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Because the world was populated from these three sons of Noah, it is proper to classify men only according to this class, a classification, which is true. Let's jump down. Shemites, Hamites, and Japhites are not Caucasoid. Mongoloid or Negroid. The later category is a modern anthropological classification that we will deal with more th thoroughly later. And that is true for the most part, right? The three parts, because Negroid, that's, that's really a, a misnomer. Right? That's not a real thing you can really classify somebody as. Moving on. The parts of the earth inhabited by the children of Shem were parts of the territory of Assyria and Elam, Persia, east of the Tigris, the eastern part of Syria, and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. Let's jump further down to get to the crux of the matter, which is Javan and who they are. But you see how detailed this um, historian is. This is written by Rudolf R. Windsor. The third classification of mankind was the Japhites. From Japheth, who was the youngest son of Noah, the offspring of Japheth, occupied the Isles of the Gentiles. Now, he didn't make that term up, right? That's found in Genesis. We're going to read about it, right, further in this uh, video, but let's continue to read real quick. The shore territories of the Mediterranean Sea in Europe and the parts of Asia Minor, whence they dispersed northward over the entire continent of Europe and great part of Asia. After Noah's Ark rested on the Mount of Ararat, and the dispersal of the children of men at the Tower of Babel, Japheth's descendants traveled west, north, and northwest of the Mountain of Ararat and the Caucasus Mountains. The Japhites settled near the mountains Taurus and Slakia and Amos in Turkey. They journeyed to the Tanis in the south southeast of uh, Russia. And along Europe and Cadiz, aka Spain, 
The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. Gomer was the ancestor of the first uh, Cimmerians and of the latter Simbri, including other offshoots of this Celtic family, and of the present day Giles in Ireland and Scotland. Right? And that's pretty plain. So those original Japhites, they inhabited Greece and Europe, and of course parts of Russia. It wasn't until later down the line where Esau came into the scene and slain a large number of them and conquered that land, which is why ancient Minoan and some uh, Mycenaeans and um, Slaki Mycenaeans and Minoan culture on their walls and on certain vessels. It portrays man to be dark skinned. That's because the original people of that land that uh, that that was born in that land and conquered that land and dwelt that, in that land were melanated people. But just because they were melanated does not mean that they are Israelites. You have a lot of melanated nations. East Indians are melanated. Africans, of course, are melanated. But it's not that does not give us the right to call us the same people. Because skin color is, is, it really doesn't matter about skin color. So let's continue. Well, before we go, move on. Let's go to, let's go to Genesis, the 10th chapter, before we continue reading on. We're going to be, jump down to one, right? Now that's history. And this is the Bible, which also is history. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were the sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. Right. So when you hear the term Ashkenazi Jew, those are specifically Jews that came from where? Spain. And how do we know that? I'm going to pull up the book today, right now. This book is titled Everything You Need to Know About Latino History. Okay. And I'm going to um, post a picture at the end, Lord willing. Maybe I can do it now. First, let me find it. So you really have to get into this history to understand who is who. You know, pre-adventure you may run across a, a, um, a Hawaiian. You may say, oh, you're an Israelite because the white man did this and the third to you. You kind of fit the curses. No, he's not an Israelite. Not at all. Here we go. I'm going to show Israel in one second. This is Spanish Jews. This is everything you need to know about Latino history. Spanish Jews and their descendants are known as Sephardim. Their customs... Hebrew pronunciation and rituals differ somewhat from the Ashkenazic Jews who come from other European countries. Those Ashkenazic Jews come from other European countries. What did we just read? What did we just read? Let's go back to it. And I'll highlight it for Israel. Where was it? The offspring of Japheth occupied the eyes of the Gentiles, the shores and territories of the Mediterranean Sea in Europe and over parts of uh, Asia Minor. Jump down where they dispersed northward over the entire continent of Europe. Right? So in history, again, I'm going to say it again, the so-called white man, they conquered all of Europe and Greece. And they kicked out the Mycenaeans and slain them. They raped, robbed, and murdered and set on fire their land. They raised it. So that's why you have white people call themselves the Ashkenazic Jews. That's why you have white people call themselves Greeks or Mycenaeans or Romans. So we're diving into the history. Let's jump down. In fact, I think it was something else. It's one more thing. 
Spanish Jews and their uh, descendants are known as Sephardim, right? That's the Spanish Jews. They're known as Sephardim. That's also a little bit of uh, information you should want to know. But uh, let's dive back into it. Where are we? Right here. The second son of Japheth was Magog, the father of the Magogites. Flavius Josephus said that the Greeks called these people Scythians. The Scythians included all the all the wandering tribes who dwelt mostly near the north of the Black and Caspian Sea. They were regarded by the ancient as tremendously lacking in intelligence and civilization. The third of Japheth was Madai, the father of the Medes. They were located at the southern part of Caspian Sea, and they later united with the Persians to form one race. From Javan, the fourth son of Japheth, came the Ionians and all the Greeks. Tubal, the fifth son of Japheth, is associated with the Javan and it provides the verses. As we continue to read down, it, it tells us all the places that they occupied. So that's playing upon tables. Now, let's say, well, that's not enough, you are done. WFI, you're not providing enough information. Let's jump to the next uh, to the next source. The Mycenaeans or Minoans. This is on the Aegean Sea. If you want to know where the Aegean Sea is, you see it. Greece. And Crete is in between Istanbul and Greece. Further lower, I believe you have... Uh, I believe that's, um, it, uh, I can't remember Salakia, but nevertheless, Patra. Yeah, Sparta and Corneth, right? And Crete's right there. And you see Samos. So all this area was occupied by the Japhites. And I was um, also the uh, the Aegean Sea, as you can see. That's the Aegean Sea, or Aegean, as some may pronounce it. So let's see this information. Minoan culture re reached its peak at about 1600 BC and was noted for its cities and palaces, extended train contacts, and use of writing, and as you can see in both pictures, they were dark-skinned. These were the original occupants of the land. The Eurasian Invasion. Sometime around 1200, the white invaders from Central Asia who had 300 years earlier conquered the black civilization in Eastern Europe, invaded the Aegean Sea, the cause of this massive migration south and west completely unknown. The East people of Eurasian plains were originally nomadic hunter-gatherers. The horses had, domestic, had been domesticated by them. And that's Esau ruling with the sword. That's his blessing when you read in Genesis. And was their main mode of transportation. They did not yet know writing, so we do not know what their previous history was. In the Indus Valley, they will be known as the Aryans. In Elam, they will be known as the uh, Parnai, the Corinthians. That's a little tiny bit off of them. But um, nevertheless, we know that those were white people. As mentioned above, the earliest white invaders had spent about 300 years in Eastern Europe mixing with the indigenous blacks there so there's possibility that these people were already a mixed race so-called when they arrived to Aegean Sea from the Persian capital right it just goes into the history you see those noses those are not Edomite noses that man has locks for crying out loud see Socrates so he might be uh and I've heard that it was as well a lot of them was really Jake's see that so 
So the history gets deep, man. And they were referred to as the Sea People as well. And who also is known as the Sea People? The Hawaiians. Yeah, I'm going to look more into this, man. Might do a part two, Lord willing. Yeah, it, man, this gets deep. So now we have a, a, a better idea of who Japheth is. You can't think, you can't always believe what Esau tell you. He may say that he's a Greek or he's a uh, so-called uh, sp sp Spaniard. He's none of these things. He doesn't really have an identity besides his biblical nationality, which is Esau. But outside of that, he, you know, hey, he's, he's, he's always going to be Esau. That's the point. Esau is always going to be Esau. He, he can't change his identity no matter how hard he tries. And the reason for him tra trying to change it and blend in is because he has that mark. See that? Can't make this stuff up. Here's how Greeks portrayed themselves. As you can see, dark-skinned Greeks portrayed very differently compared to Ethiopians. Furthermore, ancestry tests done on Minoans and Mycenaeans show them to be descendants of Neolithic farmers from Anatolia, Anatolia, present-day Turkey, and other parts of Southwest Asia. All history of the Minoans and Mycenaeans show entirely indigenous Greek Mediterranean ancestry with little to no outside admixture. And that these Greeks overlap almost perfectly with Greeks today. Yeah, these aren't the modern day Greeks. These are Edomites. In short, Afrocentrists claiming Minoans and Mycenaeans is laughable, much like their claims on Egyptian, Aztec, Inca, Japanese culture, civilization, rather, etc. It doesn't even deserve attention. And Esau will do his best to make sure everybody is whitewashed and that uh, he's the face of, uh, um, you know, all these other nations. Look like a Mycenaean walking up to me. See that? That's a spirit. I wish I could show y'all. Damn, that's a spirit. He looked like a, uh, looked like a Japhite. Wow. All right, that's all right. Um, anyway. Yeah, that's the spirit. But, uh, yeah. Yep, yep. All of this goes back to the word of the day, which was Javin. You know, they did a lot of trade with the, uh, I believe they did a lot of trade with, uh, the Egyptians. You know? But I've arrived to Zai Ezra's been edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashan was shy. This wasn't intended to be a long lesson, but more so a quick cold cut, touching on certain points and proof that the modern day Japhites are the Samoans and um, a few of the people from um, the Polynesian Islands, which simply means uh, uh, many islands. But with that, I'm going to bid Ezra Shalom. Abaratzah is what's been edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, kings, while princesses.